Alcohol and Music Part 1 About a drunk cellist and a divine inspiration Munich Anno Domini 1823 The audience is enjoying the opera, The Two Foxes, by Mayhill. Suddenly, the smell of smoke spreads and the audience sees a bright spot behind the seats. Fire! Prince Charles calls out to the audience that a reliable water extinguishing system has been installed. Thus the audience leaves the newly renovated Munich Opera House disciplined and without panic. But the longed for drizzle does not come. After the renovation, they forgot to fill the water tanks. The fire expands. The backdrops are already on fire. The fire brigades are arriving to the fire area. All church bells ring and the trumpets of the garrison alert the population. The fire brigades aim their syringes at the opera house. But after a few pours of water, the water source runs dry. In the bitterly cold night the water freezes in the hoses. The firemen and volunteers hurry to the nearby brewery and with the brewing water and bottled beer, part of the building can be saved. In the opera world, however, alcohol is not only used to extinguish opera house fires. Alcohol serves various artists as a valve for the ubiquitous stage fright. Composers also rely on an occasional sip to boost their creativity. Richard Wagner did not oppose such a music composition technique. Cosima Wagner recorded everything in her meticulously notated memoirs. He liked to have a beer at work. She reports dutifully. And the French wine growing community Saint Pere proudly announces on its website. The wine from Saint Pere also inspires the greatest creators. Richard Wagner composed Parsifal by immersing himself in Saint Pere. The fact is that Wagner ordered 100 bottles of this white wine at the time of the composition of Parsifal. The great opera composer George Friedrich Handel is famous for his excesses. However, his legendary eating and drinking banquets cause serious health problems. At this time the wine is often mixed with lead to preserve it. When the grapes were of low quality, grape juice was added, which was boiled in lead pots. Lead is added to many products in this time. Even the white powder, that the bald Saxon wore under his wig, contains lead. One evening Handel is invited to a super. Suddenly he rises and announces that a musical thought has come to him that requires immediate notation. He goes into an adjoining room. Nobody wants to disturb him, in fear to interrupt him during the divine inspiration. Until a guest, after a long wait, looks through the keyhole and discovers the great Saxon while emptying a bottle of port wine. The list of composers, that often are under full sale, could be extended at will. Even composers who are considered serious from today's point of view, were not immune to this demon. A tavern bill from Johann Sebastian Bach's trip to Halle has been preserved for posterity, which shows 18 big mugs of beer on his bill. The famous Richard Strauss, the composer of the Rosen Cavalier, had a special relationship to beer. His mother was the granddaughter of the founder of the Hackershaw Brewery, one of Munich's great breweries. Strauss, famous for his realistic sound paintings, even claimed that if he described a beer musically, you would even find out its brand. Let's finish this podcast with an episode taken from the book Breakdowns and Disasters in Music, by Daniel Hope. The story happened in a concert hall. I remember the story of a concert of the BBC Symphony Orchestra in London. The program included Edward Elgar's Enigma Variations. As the great cello solo approached, conductor Colin Davis panicked, for the cello soloist had obviously fallen asleep. The man had a reputation for drinking more alcohol than is good for his health, and even now seemed to have sunk gently into more few sums, under the effect of highly spiritual drinks. All attempts by his desk neighbor to shake him awake were unsuccessful. Davis then gave another cellist in the orchestra the signal to step in. But at the same moment, the solo cellist opened his eyes, looked at the conductor, waited for his sign and began his part confidently, without batting an eyelid. Pierre Boulis, the former head of the BBC orchestra, sat in the audience and hurried to the solo cellist in the dressing room after the concert. How do you manage to play so beautifully, when you are drunk? He asked him. The answer, very simple, Pia. I also practice drunk.
Listen to more about Richard Wagner, Richard Strauss and much more in www.opera inside the online opera guide. Everything about opera.